Section 21 of Little Masterpieces of American Wit and Humor, Volume 2. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by James K. White, Chula Vista. Little Masterpieces of American Wit and Humor, Volume 2. Edited by Thomas Lansing Mason. Section 21. The Artless Prattle of Childhood by Robert Jones Burdett We always did pity a man who does not love childhood. There is something morally wrong with such a man. If his tenderest sympathies are not awakened by their innocent prattle, if his heart does not echo their merry laughter, if his whole nature does not reach out in ardent longing after their pure thoughts and unselfish impulses, he is a sour, crusty, crabby old stick and the world full of children has no use for him. In every age and clime, the best and noblest men loved children. Even wicked men have a tender spot left in their hardened hearts for little children. The great men of the earth loved them. Dogs loved them. Kamehameha Kimokimaduroa, the king of the cannibal islands, loves them. Rare and no gravy. Ah, yes, we all love children and what a pleasure it is to talk with them. Who can chatter with a bright-eyed, rosy-cheeked, quick-witted little darling anywhere from three to five years and not appreciate the pride which swells a mother's breast when she sees her little ones admired? Ah, yes, to be sure. One day, ah, uh, can we ever cease to remember that dreamy, idle summer afternoon? A lady friend who was down in the city on a shopping excursion came into the sanctum with her little son, a dear little tid-toddler of five bright summers, and begged us to amuse him while she pursued the duties which called her downtown. Such a bright boy, so delightful it was to talk to him. We can never forget the blissful half-hour we spent booking that prodigy up in his centennial history. Now listen, Clary, we said. His name was Clarence Fitzherbert Alencon de Marchmont Carruthers. And learn about George Washington. Who's he? inquired Clarence, etc. Listen, we said. He was the father of his country. Whose country? Ours. Yours and mine. The Confederated Union of the American people, cemented with the lifeblood of the men of 76, poured out upon the altars of our country as the dearest libation to liberty that her votaries can offer. Who did? asked Clarence. There is a peculiar tact in talking to children that very few people possess. Now, most people would have grown impatient and lost their temper when little Clarence asked so many irrelevant questions. But we did not. We knew that however careless he might appear at first, we could soon interest him in the story, and he would be all eyes and ears. So we smiled sweetly, that same sweet smile which you may have noticed on our photographs just the faintest ripple of a smile breaking across the face like a ray of sunlight and checked by lines of tender sadness just before the two ends of it pass each other at the back of the neck and so smiling we went on well one day george's father george who asked clarence george washington he was a little boy then just like you one day his father whose father demanded clarence with an encouraging expression of interest. George Washington's, this great man we were telling you of. One day, George Washington's father gave him a little hatchet for a... Gave who a little hatchet? The dear child interrupted with a gleam of bewitching intelligence. Most men would have betrayed signs of impatience, but we didn't. We know how to talk to children. So we went on. George Washington, his... Who gave him the little hatchet? His father and his father whose father george washington's oh yes george washington and his father told him told who told george oh yes george and we went on just as patient and as pleasant as you could imagine we took up the story right where the boy interrupted for we could see that he was just crazy to hear the end of it we said and he told him that who told him what Clarence broke in. Why, George's father told George. What did he tell him? Why, that's just what I'm going to tell you. 
he told him who told him george's father he what for why so he wouldn't do what he told him not to do he told him george told him queried clarence no his father told george oh yes told him that he must be careful with the hatchet who must be careful george must oh yes must be careful with the hatchet what hatchet why george's oh yes with the hatchet and not cut himself with it or drop it in the cistern or leave it out in the grass all night so george went round cutting everything he could reach with his hatchet at last he came to a splendid apple tree his father's favorite and cut it down and who cut it down george did oh but his father came home and saw it the first thing and saw the hatchet no saw the apple tree and he said who has cut down my favorite apple tree what apple tree george's father's and everybody said they didn't know anything about it and anything about what the apple tree oh and george came up and heard them talking about it heard who talking about it heard his father and the men what was they talking about about this apple tree what apple tree the favorite apple tree that george cut down george who george washington oh so george came up and heard them talking about it and he what did he cut it down for just to try his little hatchet whose little hatchet why his own the one his father gave him gave who why george washington who gave it to him his father did oh so george came up and he said father i cannot tell a lie i who couldn't tell a lie why george washington he said father i cannot tell a lie it was his father couldn't why no george couldn't oh george oh yes it was i cut down your apple tree i did his father did no no it was george said this said he cut his father no 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 said he cut down his apple tree george's apple tree no no his father's oh he said his father said no 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 george said father i cannot tell a lie i did it with my little hatchet and his father said noble boy i would rather lose a thousand trees than have you tell a lie george did no his father said that said he'd rather have a thousand apple trees no 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 said he'd rather lose a thousand apple trees than said he'd rather george would no said he'd rather he would than have him lie oh george would rather have his father lie we are patient and we love children but if mrs carruthers of arch street hadn't come and got her prodigy at this critical juncture we don't believe all burlington could have pulled us out of that snarl and as clarence fitzherbert allen con de marchmont carruthers padded down the stairs we heard him telling his ma about a boy who had a father named george and he told him to cut down an apple tree and he said he'd rather tell a thousand lies than cut down one apple tree in the house of representatives one day mr springer was finishing an argument and ended by saying i am right i know i am and i would rather be right then be president he stood near the late s s cox who looked mischievously across at him and said as he ended don't worry about that springer you'll never be either end of section twenty one recording by james k white chula vista